One corporation, alone and without competition, is a tyrant, dominating the market like a Bond villain. Two companies keep each other in check, undercutting and outperforming one another to drive progress forwards and prices down. However, before long, two rival companies will often arrive at equilibrium, a kind of silent agreement not to rock the boat too hard and keep the whole enterprise profitable for everyone. Except consumers, of course, because f us, right? Well, that sure feels like what's happened in the PC market. Graphics cards have been dominated by red and green for so long, their colours have started to run. In 2022, however, a new hope appeared. And its colour is blue. In the two years plus that I've been active on YouTube, I haven't spoken much about Intel's discrete GPUs. This is in part because I only review stuff I can afford to buy, and as intriguing as the Arc series of GPUs have been over the last year or so, I haven't quite been prepared to sink a few hundred on one just to satisfy my curiosity. Well, thankfully my friends over at Hardware Lab aren't afraid of living dangerously and have lent me their Arc Alchemist A770 Limited Edition to review. I'll admit, my curiosity was a morbid one. I didn't expect Intel to genuinely compete in performance with their first product, and their arrival almost smelt of a big company expecting to dominate a new market from Jump Street. Apple's first iPhone rocketed them into a prominent position in the mobile phone industry, even if it did take a couple of iterations to get the product just right. On the other hand, when Sony started making interchangeable lens cameras in the 2000s, reviewers and consumers almost shrugged them out of the market. Intel didn't need to innovate with Arc. It doesn't do anything other graphics cards didn't already do. Its main appeal in 2022 was simply that it existed at a time where GPUs were in short supply. Over a year on, Intel have passed some of their early teething troubles and the consensus appears to be that Arc is now safe to buy. With a 16GB frame buffer and a £400 asking price in the UK and even lower in the US, it presents an appealing prospect at a time where games are getting demanding, especially for VRAM. To get a feel for how this card performs, I've installed it on my moderately priced gaming PC using a Ryzen 5 5600X and 32 gigs of RAM. The CPU has the potential to be a bottleneck with this tier of graphics card, so I don't expect to be doing much, if any, testing at 1920x1080. Um, well, uh, I might have spoken too soon. If, if any game was going to shoot down my 1440p premise out of the gate, it was bound to be The Last of Us. The high preset has no issues with VRAM, but the frame rate isn't particularly impressive. You could expect a reasonably constant 30fps, with an average just short of 40, but 60 doesn't seem to be on the cards. Dropping to medium while retaining ultra textures adds about 10% to the average and slightly more to the 1% lows. Pretty playable, sure, but disappointing compared to even the RX 6700. On reflection, if my rhetorical goal was to convince you that the ARC A770 is a 1440 card, maybe I shouldn't have followed up with Jedi Survivor. Alright, my bad. Raw 1440 is pretty rough going. At the high preset, you could potentially get a pretty solid 30 FPS lock, as my benchmark runs to an average of 42 and lows of 34. Adding balanced FSR brings the average up to a more tolerable 63 without impacting image quality too much and possibly even improving it. However, there's a bug in Survivor that Respawn have yet to fix, where ambient occlusion on Cal's hair vanishes when he starts moving, causing it to turn a rather unfortunate shade of orange. Until it gets an official fix, the temporary solution comes in the form of ray tracing. Alas, it's an expensive solution, as the full 1440 high frame rate drops from 42 to 32, and the 1% starts to look cinematic in a bad way. Adding balanced FSR helps, and again could provide a locked 30 FPS if you were inclined to, with averages of 48. As it stands, this actually puts the A770 slightly behind the GTX 1080 Ti, including ray tracing, though of course it doesn't have to deal with that card's glitchy noise reduction. 
I'd love to have tested the ARC in 1080p, as I did with the old Pascal card. Alas, another bug prevented me from changing resolution. Way to go, guys. Flipping the script somewhat, Resident Evil 4's performance is shockingly good on the A770, matching or beating the RX 6700 at every tested preset, and allowing for higher texture settings in the process. 1440 prioritised graphics manages almost 89 FPS with maxed out 8GB textures. Turning to the ray tracing preset could potentially still be done at 8GB, but to avoid any of the issues the game warns about, I dropped to 6GB. This only sends averages down to 80 FPS, and 1% lows are still above 60. The max preset restores Leon's luscious locks, along with RT and all the other bells and whistles. Once more I kept textures at 6GB, and averages hover around 60 as a result, with 1% lows of 50. There's been some confusion around Forza Horizon 5, not at all helped by my confusion about Forza Horizon 5. I've been aware since late last year that Playground Games had added in-game ray traced reflections to the Ultra and Extreme modes. For much of that time, I'd assumed that the quality presets included the appropriate level of RT, when in fact they just added the previous kind, the one that only works in your garage or in photo mode. It turns out that even at the Ultra and Extreme presets, you still have to manually enable the Ultra or Extreme RT modes. With that in mind then, at 1440 Ultra without in-game RT, the A770 can push 77.6 FPS on average, with 68.91% lows, just a couple frames behind the RX 6700. There is room to turn up to extreme if you really want to, averages now dip below 70 and minimums are still above 60. On the other hand, if you have yourself a particularly shiny set of cars in your collection, 1440 Ultra only loses 5 frames by adding Ultra RT, averaging 72.7. Now your car can reflect other parts of your car. Cool, eh? I've told this story a couple of times now, but to reiterate, I used to benchmark Halo Infinite in the campaign during a quite demanding outdoor section. However, I had a few issues with the Xbox Game Pass launcher, so I switched over to the Steam version, which is free to play. Now I do an average of a couple of big team battles, which are roughly as demanding as the campaign. At 1440 high, the A770 performs decently well, keeping minimums above 60 FPS and averaging 76. This is within a couple of frames of the RX 6700 and GTX 1080 Ti at the same settings. For those who prefer smaller scale games, an average of three Team Slayer matches came to 86 FPS with 1% lows of 74, again on par with the 1080 Ti. In a vacuum, the A770's performance in A Plague Tale Requiem isn't all that impressive. At 1440 medium with ultra resolution optimizer, it falls just short of a 60fps average and lows drop into the 40s. However, a lack of context robs the arc of some glory. Compared to the RX 6700, it's actually a small victory for the A770. Okay, it's not even a 2fps difference, we'll, we'll call it a very small victory over the Radeon. Returning to the Sony titles, and the A770 is a little less satisfying in God of War. It falls a couple of frames short of the 60 average, losing to the RX 6700 and even the GTX 1080 Ti. It wouldn't take a lot of effort to get over the 60 mark, dropping to medium should probably be sufficient, and preferable to using FSR, which still looks a bit off in this title. So, I've come across this issue several times in the course of making other videos, and it's a bit of a shock to see it here. While swinging through Manhattan in Spider-Man Remastered, the game stops for a moment to load up textures and assets before carrying on once it's done. 
So far I've seen it on old SLI and Crossfire GPU setups, and I've seen it on an RTX 3070 that was being tested with a Pentium from 2014. I didn't expect to see it here, and certainly not during two separate non-RT runs and two RT runs. I'm hoping this is something to do with my setup and not something other people will experience, but it's possibly something that Intel's very active driver development team might yet need to work on. That aside, the game seems to average 96 FPS at 1440 very high, and can even manage a greater than 70 FPS average when RT reflections are enabled, but you can't really trust those figures, and I can't genuinely recommend this right now. Uncharted 4 proves less of a problem, and it still looks okay. Perhaps not as good as one might like, and never quite as good as the cutscenes, but I think you'll still want to use the ultra quality preset. The good news is the A770 has enough horsepower to deliver 75 FPS at 1440. The less good news is that 1% lows dropped slightly below 60, which you can either deal with, or attempt to fix with a 60 FPS cap and maybe some select settings reductions. I don't know if Intel's devs specifically targeted Cyberpunk 2077 for optimization, but it's performing really quite well here. At 1440 Ultra, the game runs at almost 50 FPS, with lows of about 36. Now, you could obviously drop to high and get close to 60, maybe even pass it at medium, but my point of comparison here is the RTX 3070, a card which still sells for substantially more than the A770 in most markets, and which is only 8 FPS faster here. The margin is a little wider with RT enabled, the RT medium preset feels pretty close to no RT at all, but also looks like no RT at all, and RT Ultra only runs at below 20 FPS, about 20% less than the 3070. Still, Cyberpunk performance is a big win over the RX 6700 across the board, and a huge win over the old GTX 1080 Ti. If that weren't enough, the A770 plays a flipping blinder in The Witcher 3. At 1440 Ultra, its 86.8 FPS average is less than 3 FPS behind the RTX 3070, and its 1% lows are more than 10% above those of the 8GB GeForce. Is RT going to ruin the party? Like the Nvidia, the A770's performance in RT Ultra is a barely playable 26 FPS, but you can always add some FSR to bring those numbers up. More to the point, the RX 6700 can only manage to hit the exact same average by using the RT performance preset. Fortnite made for an interesting comparison to the RX 6700. At 1440 low with epic view distance, the game averaged 204 FPS, within margin of error of the Radeon's 208. Minimums were better on the AMD by about 15%, but the A770 was nothing to sneeze at, with almost 140fps 1% lows. Turning up to medium still maintains a pretty acceptable high refresh experience, with the average close to 144 and lows still over 100. The epic preset with hardware ray tracing isn't a great idea for a multiplayer shooter. Even with TSR low upscaling at quality, the game still can't even reach a 40fps average, and 1% lows are below 30. I suspect something weird's going on in Warzone 2, whether at 1440 Extreme, Ultra or Balanced, or with upscaling enabled, the average FPS registered somewhere in the mid-60s to low 70s. This doesn't appear to be any kind of bottleneck, the CPU's a long way from tapping out, and the GPU is always at or close to 100% utilisation, so all I can think of is that maybe there's a driver problem waiting to be resolved. I'm happy to blame the 34fps 1% lows for why I suck so much at this game, if you're happy to believe my filthy lies. Performance wise, this is a good 10-15% short of the old RX 5700 XT, and way short of the 100 plus FPS the RX 6700 is capable of at ultra settings, so if you're heavily into Warzone, this might not be the GPU for you. 
regulars may know that I steer clear of including GTA 5 unless I have a good reason to. I know it's a good game, I know it's popular, but I feel bad about having a 2020 release on my roster and I'm very conflicted about Witcher 3. However, there aren't a million videos about how GTA 5 runs on the A770 yet, unlike every other graphics card under the sun, so I thought I'd use this as an excuse for a bit of a rampage through San Andreas. GTA can still be demanding of course, and on the other hand you also don't want to let it get too fast. Above a certain frame rate, the engine will struggle to keep up and you'll get huge stutters regardless of your hardware. So I cranked up the advanced settings and turned the resolution to 1440 using FXAA as MSAA turned out to be a step too far and saw a quite excellent 60 nerf FPS on average. Finally, I know there's not a lot of love among you for, for spoken and I'll admit, the alleged banter between the protagonist and her sentient jewellery does make me want to turn the sound off, and the quality of the in-game graphics do not in any way match the system requirements, but I already had the demo installed and I'm sure someone out there might want to know how the ARC performs. Well, it's not great. The Intel devs probably took reviews to heart and gave this one a pass, so the average at 1440 standard quality is a pretty uninspiring 59 FPS, 10 short of the RX 6700 and the RTX 3070, with the latter being able to achieve those frames at mostly high settings. The Arc Alchemist A770 16GB model is nowhere near as hard to recommend as I suspected it might be. There are still wrinkles in the experience. I loaded up the in-game overlay because, for now, the Intel doesn't seem to interface with MSI Afterburner for more than a handful of metrics, and the issue of freezing in Spider-Man was pretty disappointing to see in a big game, but on the whole, this was a far more polished experience than I'd expected. For a first effort? I have to say, bravo Intel, you've done well for yourselves. Can I recommend it? Well, I'm typically one to suggest the used market over new in most situations, and while the A770 does appear to be pretty competitive at US prices, the UK price is still a little too high to earn an unqualified recommendation. You can get an RX 6700 XT or 6750 XT for less than the 16 gig arc right now, and given how the regular 6700 compares, I'd expect those cards to be extremely compelling alternatives. That being said, neither of those cards have 16 gigs of VRAM, and Intel's RT performance is looking quite strong, so which you should buy probably depends on where your priorities lie. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.